Today's program is divided into two major sections, production and post-production. We'll start with production here in our backstage area, using monitors to create a green screen. Then we'll move into the studio and look at how to light a green screen and how to position and light the talent in front of it. In both studios, we'll be shooting the video we use later to create our effects. In the post-production section, we'll import the footage we just shot into Final Cut Pro 10 and Adobe Premiere Pro CC and discover how to use them to create visual effects. Along the way, we'll learn how to tweak our settings and overcome problems that occurred during production. <laughs> That's because there are always problems with green screen effects in production. This is what we call our backstage area. This is a 10 by 10 room with a sound blanket hung diagonally in the middle of it to kill echoes. We have two soft boxes using daylight balanced fluorescent lights. The backlight is a strip light that isn't color balanced, but the gold color of the light looks good given my hair color and the rest of the set. Behind me is a standard 42 inch television set. A common production technique is to shoot a monitor in order to insert video behind the talent. For example, we do this every week on the digital production buzz. Here for example is a still of Randy Altman. This is from her report from last week's buzz. The problem is that the TV set does not do a good job of playing Randy's video. It, it looks dark and contrasty and unpleasant. Instead, what we do is insert a green background into the monitor. This requires us to be careful of reflections on the screen and adjust where I sit in relation to the monitor. Also, as you'll discover, green screen effects are all about the edges between the green background and the talent in the foreground. The cleaner your edges, the better your key. So by chroma keying the green out, we can insert a perfect copy of Randy into the monitor without the color shift and artifacts caused by shooting the monitor directly. While we could do the key live on air, instead we record this segment a couple of hours before the show, then do the key in post prior to airtime. I use this technique a lot, and during the software portion of this webinar, I'll show you how we create the finished key. I'll also show you a second effect where we used two monitors to display two different images during a recent commercial we created promoting our video training library. The cool thing about using a monitor is that it is fast and cheap and doesn't require any special setup aside from avoiding reflections of the lights on the front of the monitor. Here's the green screen. Select the green clip. There's our background movie. There's our green movie. And here will ultimately be the highlight. We've already talked about that. Select it. Go to the effect panel, effects panel, go to keying, ultra key, drop that in. Again, click, there we are. Check our key, do we need to make tweaks to it? Yeah, we've got gray fuzziness here, that's no good. Go back to matte generation. First is our white transparent, our white is perfect, that's, translate that. Transparency adjusts that which you want to be opaque. You want this to be solid white to be fully opaque. So generally, I don't adjust transparency. Generally, I'm always adjusting pedestal and shadow. I'll adjust shadow first. I'm looking right now at this corner and I'll tweak pedestal. Going the wrong way. Oop, now I've got it. I'm getting too much black coming in. I've gone too far. I want this to be pure white. Check our shadow, there we go. I'm just gonna keep tweaking these, there we go, until I get a solid color here, and nice sharp edges. Then I'll switch this back to composite. We see Buzz backstage. In Final Cut, it's called the Distort Tool. In Premiere, it's called the Corner Pin. And the Corner Pin is inside the Distort category, so we'll twirl down Distort, and we'll look for Corner Pin, and we'll drop it on top of the clip. Now, when I have the corner pin applied, if I click this icon right here, it displays the corner pin icons. You can just barely see them right there. That's what they look like. So I'm gonna grab the corner pin icons and drag it so it just matches the corner of the monitor. It doesn't have to align perfectly. What we're really doing is we are setting up the illusion of perspective and now when I've got that corner pinned, 
We can see that works perfectly. We'll turn this off to hide those controls. We've got the highlight right there. I want to add the highlight. So what we'll do is we'll back up, put our playhead in the middle of the clip, go up to the clip menu, go down to video options, add frame hold, and just drag this last frame right there, drag it all the way to the end. And that is now a still frame that I can put a mask on to have that highlight come through. Select it. Again, the mask is inside opacity. Click the pen tool and click to somewhere around in there, somewhere around in there. Beautiful. And all I'm doing is grabbing highlights. Again, if it gets to be a problem, you can just drag this point or add a curve because there is no highlight there. We have some flexibility. And then inside the opacity section, notice under blend mode, it says normal. Change the blend mode to screen. And now we've added that highlight in the top right corner. If we deselect the clip, the top clip provides the highlight. The middle clip provides the chroma key, which is why I'm not worried about exactly matching that matte because I don't have to. I'm just adding the highlight up here. And in the bottom clip provides the background video. Isn't that cool? This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at green screen keys from production to post. For the entire webinar, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 190. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash subscriptions. And thanks.